Okay, this is an example of single image photogrammetry, which is getting measurements from pictures. <clears throat> this is about as simple of uh, an example as I can come up with. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a picture and put that picture in some CAD software that I have here. Um, in the picture I have two objects. There's a six inch ruler that I'm going to use for a vertical scale. And there's a piece of pipe <coughs> based on the picture and on this six inch scale we're going to determine how long this piece of pipe is. Um, this is a pretty simple example because one I have uh, not only just a planar surface which is the patio in this case but I also have a grid system on the patio, which I will use to determine perspective. If you have a picture that doesn't have a grid system, you can still um, develop a grid system in perspective if you can uh, locate four points on your planar surface. And if you don't have something like a ruler in the picture, you can sometimes get scale from something else in the picture that's vertical that you can measure. Uh, it's also possible to go recreate the photograph and, uh, and get a vertical scale that way. But in this case, again, I have a pretty simple image, so we're going to um, work with that. Uh, I'm going to create a layer here with red lines that we're going to just use to figure out the perspective of the picture. <coughs> so if you have any sets of parallel lines, they don't have to be perpendicular, but if you have parallel lines, uh, two sets of parallel lines, uh, you can use those to find uh, the horizon, the vanishing points. So what I'm going to do is construct uh, lines along the joints that are visible in this patio. Uh, there's some error involved in this. <coughs> the method doesn't take into account camera calibration, so if the uh, camera has any distortion, uh, this won't account for that. So you can see here the red line doesn't coincide with the joint. Uh, here it's actually quite a bit off. Uh, it's hard to tell if that's because of distortion in the camera itself or uh, because the patio isn't uh, precisely planar. Uh, but there's always going to be error and that's a couple of sources of error that we might have. Uh, so we're going to get this other set of lines, <coughs> which appear to be perpendicular to the first set. But like I say, they don't have to be perpendicular. Uh, any sets of parallel lines, as long as all four lines aren't parallel, you can work this out. Now, that's actually a perpendicular grid. It could be a square, it could be a rectangle, who knows, it doesn't matter. But since it's in perspective, if I find the intersection of these lines like this, those intersection points have to be um, uh, on the horizon. Now, when I say horizon, I don't mean the horizon that you see when you look out the window. <coughs> I'm talking about the horizon of our planar surface. This could be a vertical surface, it could be lots of different surfaces, but this surface that we're assuming is planar has a horizon which is located here off picture. If our picture was big enough, you could perhaps see it. Okay, we're going to create another layer here. This is going to be 
uh, our vertical. And we're, let's see, we'll make this yellow. <clears throat> now, so what we need to do is find the vertical reference. Um, and to do that, I need a couple of lines here. This is just the um, bottom edge of the picture and then I need a set of diagonals like that. Now those diagonals indicate the center of the image <coughs> which also happens to be the line of sight of the camera so that's the direction the camera is looking and you can see that the camera is pretty obviously pointed down we can figure out how much the camera is pointed down by looking at the vertical distance to the horizon. And to be vertical, it's not vertical to the image or my drawing of the image. <clears throat> it has to be perpendicular to the horizon. So I draw a line here through center of image and extended it up to the horizon. And I'm also going to extend it to the bottom of the picture, which is why I put that line down there. Okay, so this height um, the height from this intersection to the center of the image is actually an angle. Uh, you should think of this as an angle. So that distance represents how far below horizontal the camera is. And we can calculate that if we have a dimension system to do that by. The simplest dimension system is to just use the dimensions of the camera sensor. So if you look up the um, properties of the camera, you can usually find what the dimensions of the actual sensor are. In this case, it's 23.7 uh, millimeters wide. So what we'd like to do is make this picture 23.7 millimeters wide. So if we measure the width of the bottom of the picture, We can see that right now it's 4,928. <coughs> the units are actually pixels. That's uh, how many pixels wide the picture is. But what we're going to do is convert that to millimeters. So we want it to be 23.7 and now it's 49.28. So I'm going to select everything. And we're going to scale this picture about this corner. Uh, we'd like it to be 23.7. And right now it's 4,928. So we scale it by that proportion. Of course, it got a lot smaller. We can zoom in and see that the picture is now 23.7 millimeters wide. And since the numbers are so big here, we're going to uh, shrink that up uh, to something like 0.5. There we go. Now we can zoom in. I can see the picture is 23.7 inches wide, and I can see that this distance from the horizon to center of picture is 15.23 millimeters. I can convert that in, into an angle using arc tangent. 15.23 uh, is the sine projection of the angle. The cosine projection of the angle is actually just the focal length of the camera. So if we look over here, I've uh, I got the focal length of the camera 
in this case it's a fixed vocal length camera so that's pretty easy if it's a zoom camera what you'll have to do is get the exif file and see what the uh, focal length was set at when the picture was taken so Anyway, I have the sine projection, which is 20, is 15.23. I have the cosine projection, which is 18.3. And if I take the arctangent of that, which I've already um, set up in here. No, that's the wrong number. Uh, we want 15.23. We can see over here on the spreadsheet, this is just arc tangent of those two numbers. Um, but the camera is pointed roughly 40 degrees below horizontal. So, next thing I'm going to do is draw a picture. This vertical line <coughs> that I've created perpendicular to the horizon actually represents a vertical plane. Uh, the plane is perpendicular uh, to the surface, in this case of the patio, and it passes through the focal point of the camera. So when I view that plane uh, in this picture, it looks like a line, but it's actually a plane. So over here I'm going to make a diagram of some things that are actually on that vertical plane. And first, I'm going to draw a horizontal line. I'm going to select that, and we're going to rotate that downward, so it's a negative 39.76. <clears throat> so now I have a new line that represents the uh, uh, direction of view of the camera, which is roughly 40 degrees below horizontal. Okay. Now, in the same vertical plane, we can get the projections of our two objects. We can project those objects into the vertical plane, and then we can plot them over here. So to do that, what we have to do is draw some lines. Um, let's start with the pipe. So I'm going to go just to the lowest point in this profile view of the pipe, something like about there. And I'm going to draw a line over to my vertical plane, perpendicular to the vertical plane. So that's a line. <coughs> That's true perpendicular to that plane. And I can do the same thing here at the bottom of the cylinder. Uh, once again, perpendicular. Our reference is this six inch ruler. And I can get a projection of a six inch onto here as well. Something like that. This ends up just below image center perpendicular, right there. Now, these distances along the vertical plane also represent angles. <coughs> and we can calculate those angles by measuring them. And once again, uh, using arctangent to get the actual angle. So, here's the top of uh, the pipe is 3.01. The bottom of the pipe is 2.09. The top of our ruler is 1.27. And then we also have to get this little dimension here, which is 0 0.03. <coughs> So all we have to do is divide these numbers by <coughs> the focal length, which is 18.3. We'll get four angles, and we can plot those then. So I've got the calculation set up here. So for the six-inch ruler, 
the distance above. So uh, ruler, we have two angles to calculate. One is a negative angle since it's below the axis of the camera. The other is going to be a positive angle. But so the distance up here is one. 1.27 which is about 4 degrees and the distance down is point, point zero 0.03 which is about a tenth of a degree. <coughs> the bottom of the pipe 2.09 is 6.5 degrees and the top of the pipe is 9.3 degrees roughly. So we can take those angles, we can come back to this picture, first we're going to rotate this to the top of the pipe which is 9.34 degrees. select our center of image and rotate that to the bottom of the pipe which is six and a half degrees and we can take our center of image line and rotate that upwards to the top of the ruler which is 3.969899 degrees and the bottom uh, of the ruler is a negative <coughs> angle so we have negative 0.09 and if we zoom in here we'll see that we have two lines here <coughs> this line is the center of image and I'm just gonna delete that since we don't need it anymore now uh, the height of the um, ruler is vertical someplace. So I've, I, I've drawn a vertical line at some arbitrary place and we'll just measure it here. And it says it's only 3.3 inches high. So we need to make it bigger. So I'm going to select this stuff and just scale it. <coughs> We want our ruler to be six inches high, and now it's 3.3, so we scale this up, and we can see now it's six inches high, so that's good. Uh, okay, so this vertical line represents my six, six inch ruler. So I'm going to draw a line here which represents horizontal. We'll go from this intersection, some random distance here, uh, that's the horizontal plane uh, of the patio. Uh, I'm going to trim off all of my lines to that. And this is the ruler, so someplace right here is my piece of pipe. Um, so I'm going to draw um, a vertical line from this intersection some distance up. 
I can trim that off again. <clears throat> So this little vertical line represents my pipe. Uh, all I have to do is measure it. And it says that my pipe is 4.59 inches high. And if you come back over here to the spreadsheet, I've actually measured the pipe. It's 4.63 inches high. I got 4. Uh, Five nine. That's an error of uh, less than one percent, which I think is um, reasonable result for the uh, pictures that we have available. Thanks for watching.